I'm Denise Minter from Soup is Love. This is Philanthropy 2.0. We're making the world a better place. Soupislove.org. Think web-based. Think peer-to-peer. -peer. Building community one bowl at a time. This is a new way of giving. Everybody knows someone who's been sick. Everybody knows someone who, because of an event in the family, a death, a birth, they can't cook. Um, this is a way to give a gift that matters. It won't go in the back of the closet. It won't wilt in the vase. Soup is love. Let me tell you why I know this is true. I'm part of a healing group here in San Francisco. I'm a cancer survivor and I make soup. I bring soup to people's houses and we sit and enjoy it together. It may be very plain and ordinary soup when I make it at home, but when we sit together and enjoy it together, it's the best soup in the world. We sit there and we smile. So how does this work? We have three key ingredients. One, the volunteer soup chef. This person delivers the soup with love and also creates the soup. Two, we have the requester, the person who orders the soup for love, a loved one, and pays for it. This money goes to charity. Three, you have the recipient or the soup slurper. So this is a win, 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 win for everyone involved. Obviously, the recipients and the charities win-win. The volunteer chef gets to make soup and give the love. And the donor, this is the unique part, they get to feed their loved ones, extend additional love through that personal touch, and then donate to the charity of their choice all together. How are we going to promote this? The website is our clearinghouse. Charities, our trusted partners. They will be on the website. The requester orders soup and chooses one of the charities and pays for that soup. 70% of the money goes to the charity. 30% goes to continue supporting Soup is Love. And the charities will also be the major source of the volunteer pool. There are also opportunities for sponsorships. We'll be working with Whole Foods, five cents a bag. We'll be working with Campbell's Soup to do recipe contests. And there's endless possibilities for coupons and um, advertising with the delivery. Now we're going to talk about business. Thanks a lot, Denise. Um, I'm going to get a little bit more into the nitty gritty. My name is Allison Monahan. Um, I am a lawyer and a former web developer. And I currently run a website myself. Um, so the first question you're probably thinking, who buys the suit? And here we're thinking, basically, this is the sandwich generation mom. She wants to care, she does care, but she's physically distant. Who makes the soup? We're in San Francisco, this is the burner foodie. This is someone who's into food, they're probably younger, and they enjoy cooking, they enjoy nurturing, and they're feeling like they have a loss of community. So this is a way for them to get involved and to have that community. Next, please. Yep. Um, are there similar concepts? Yes, we have Meals on Wheels, we have Project Open Hand. These are organized charities, they have a lot of structure, they're very good at what they do. What they're not very good at is my friend has thrown out her back and she needs a delivery. This is not what they're targeted for. Could my friend go to Grubhub or Safeway.com? Sure, but she doesn't get the love. <laughs> um, people ask, obviously, when they find out a lawyer, is this legal? Yes, the answer is yes. There is a federal law, it's called the Good Samaritan um, Food Donation Act that specifically protects anyone who donates food. So you're not liable if somebody gets sick from your soup. <laughs> Let's talk a bit about the business in the 45 seconds I have left. Our goals, we'd like to launch the website by March 2012. We don't think it's a particularly technically compli complicated project. Um, within six months, we're looking at around hopefully 10,000 users, doing two transactions each per month, an average of $20 a transaction, which gives us 40K in revenue. And as we mentioned, we would take roughly 30% of that. A year later, break even, six years, we're looking at a post-soup global expansion of 15 million users. This is basically a platform. It doesn't have to be about soup. Next. Um, as Denise discussed, the basics of the revenue model, we take a cut of each transaction, advertising sponsorship. 
Uh, just briefly, the site, there would be a splash page. You put in your zip code where you're looking for soup. The next page gives you the person who is volunteering in your area to donate. Um, I think I'm out of time. You're running on Q&A, so you can still finish if you want. Uh, all right, so well, and, um, unless anyone has anything to add from the team, I'd just like to briefly introduce the team. Denise, Einar, Elizabeth, Tammy, and Lucas. So we are happy to answer questions. Thanks you. Thank you very much. Any questions? Yes. Yeah, uh, so, <laughs> um, so I love the concept. Uh, it seems like you have a two-sided marketplace. Have you guys thought through sort of that initial chicken and egg problem and how you would start a market from a cold start? Yes. Start the market. Well, we, we want to have the charities. Mike, Mike. Oh yeah. We want to use the charities to uh, help us spread. So use their mailing list to send to their uh, members. And uh, so the members, if they, if we, a member receives from a charity, like a mail, then he will land in a landing page with a logo of that charity, and then it's sort of like a pre-selected charity for that member. So we think that's going to be like an incentive to do that. OK. We're good? Thank you very much. No, no, no questions? <laughs> from the judge. Sorry, I just wanted to ask, where, where did you get that 10,000 figure from? Say again? Where did you get the 10,000 people that the, you're going to be in? The 10,000 and the 20,000. So we figured like... Into the mic. Yeah, we've... We, did use, we used some comps from before. Um, and we figured that each of these people would do like... Because one mem each member has to... Select if he's gonna like commit to doing this once a week or t or once a month, and then on average, it should do like two transactions per uh, per head in a month. And then this is based on our outreach, the email list, the charities we have um, contacts with already, and what we estimated that they would be able to give us. And we already have a first charity signed up. Um, so yeah, it was just through through calculations. Okay. Yeah. Good. Thank you very much. I can talk to you later. <laughs> <laughs> Love to talk with you later. Thank yeah. you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now it's going to be carbon 38 on deck. On my right, I want to have point A to Z. Point A to Z on my right. Okay. You guys ready? Yeah. Go. Hi. We're carbon 38. I'm Katie. This is, oh, I'm sorry, I'm speaking pregnant. Um, we're a fitness review site that enables you to match your fitness needs. I'm Katie. This is Caroline Remy for your team. Um, I am an instructor at Physique 57 in Soul Cycle, which is just bought by Equinox. I'm a celebrity fitness trainer. I'm the spokeswoman for Women's Health Magazine. I am the celebrity fitness trainer for Gatorade's G-Series Fit, and I'm Solo Sports uh, brand ambassador. Caroline. <laughs> Some of your clients include? Oh. Kelly Rimpa and Demi Moore and Kim Raver and Zoe Deschanel and yeah, all those skinny and popular ladies. <laughs> um, I'm Caroline Gogolak. I'm a fitness enthusiast. I'm going to these classes. Um, I'm also I come from a little bit of a uh, different background. I'm also certified in yoga, but I uh, worked at Morgan Stanley and Goldman Sachs. Hi, Remy Madden. I also come from a finance background, having started my career at Morgan Stanley, and I also that moved on to William Morris Endeavor to join the strategic consulting group where I work with HSN, and I currently work at Union Bank, um, which is part of the Bank of Tokyo family. I should also add we're all former ballet dancers, so yeah. <laughs> all right, so meet Mary. She is an overworked woman. Sorry, yes, of course. She's an overworked woman, which I think a lot of us in this room are. She doesn't prioritize fitness into her life, and it's been six weeks since she's hit the gym, and you know, she is ready to work out. Today is the day the stars have aligned. <laughs> so she wants to take a yoga class, wants a friendly environment that's clean, that's fun, and good for beginners. She goes on Yelp, she finds, she thinks the studio that's right for her. However, not so clean. Hmm. <laughs> and uh, yeah, Mean Girls, Victoria's Secret <laughs> Girls, not so cool. Uh, and not for beginners. I mean, really, make a woman feel worse about herself, please. And I don't know, you know, please, I really, seriously, what are we going to do here? So Mary is unhappy, and she goes back to her desk for another six weeks without a trip to the gym. But let us introduce you to Carbon 38. <laughs>